Welcome back. May 25th marked a year since George Floyd was murdered. Former Minneapolis officer Derek Chauvin was found guilty of all charges. And behind the prosecution team in Chauvin's trial were two Latinas. And one of them is here with us today. Suri Balmacón Santiago, raised in El Barrio, Spanish Harlem, served on the prosecution team in the trial of Derek Chauvin. Welcome, Suri. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Sanji. It's honestly a pleasure to be with uh, hometown and family. It's a pleasure having you here, and I'm excited to hear that you're from El Barrio. That's incredible and super inspiring for so many of our youth here. So thank you for the work you do. Um, My of course. So, Suri, first, what does forming part of the prosecution team in the Derek Chauvin trial mean to you as a lawyer of color and Latina? So, honestly, Sanji, it was such a huge, like, an immense privilege to be a part of this team as a Latina. You know, this team was highly diverse, and that was because Attorney General Keith Ellison had this vision he saw into the future, he was able to read the tea leaves about how important it would be to have diverse representation on this trial team that's supposed to be representing justice and accountability for the community. We had representation from every walk of life, from every experience level, as well as racial and ethnic background representation. And it was an honor to be a Latina representative on this team as well as with my colleague, Lola Velasquez Aguilu. Yes, also another Latina on the prosecution team. So, you know, we're very honored and, and inspired by your work and representation of our community in this incredible, you know, uh, jury and verdict. Um, so, Suri, I'm curious, how did you prepare for this trial? In what ways was it different from your past trials? And did you face any particular challenges with it? You know, trials are known for being meticulous work. They're time consuming. They are detail oriented and every trial gets all of me. But this trial was different because it was on a national platform. And so we didn't have the luxury of being able to make mistakes, of being able to say, oh, we didn't quite get to that. We worked day in and day out to make sure we knew that case file like it was the back of our hands. And it was a very arduous but rewarding process. As far as challenges, you know, this is a unique case in terms of bringing law enforcement to the forefront and requesting accountability from the justice system. And so when we were preparing this case, we didn't know who was gonna be available to us in terms of witnesses. We didn't know what they were gonna say. And this case is historic because we have a police chief, Chief Madera Heredando, who was willing to publicly say, this is not behavior that is acceptable from the Minneapolis Police Department. This is not going to be tolerated from our police department, which is a huge point for the Minneapolis community. And he wasn't the only one. He also had a number of his colleagues join him on the stand to say, this isn't how we function in this community, and you can expect better from us. Thank you so much for sharing, Suri. And, you know, many people say that while justice was served that day, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to dismantle racism in the justice system. Uh, what needs to happen to make this progress? You know, I say a lot of this work starts far before we reach the courtroom. This kind of work starts with grassroots efforts. The whole reason that this case was in the office of the Minnesota Attorney General was because the community asked for that. The community requested that Attorney General Keith Ellison represent them and represent this case. And because the communities had such a powerful voice, they were able to influence history. And that's really what's needed to see social justice and justice reform in the future. And also we'll see that with legislation like the George Floyd Act. And we also wanted to emphasize, Suri, on the importance of representation and diversity in law. Why is it so important? And how did you make this a priority in your role as president of the Minnesota Hispanic Bar Association? Sandy, I'm so glad you asked this because I've been with the Minnesota Hispanic Bar Association for nine years. And now I'm a media past president of the organization. And it was a labor of love to be a part of that organization. 
you know, representation is power. And we do not have enough ethnic and diverse representation in government right now. That is why it's so important for Latinos and Latinas to become more involved in their government and to strive for a profession in the legal sector if that's something that they would like to do. Right now, only 4% of the legal community in the nation is Latinx. Wow. 2% is Latina. And Minnesota has the lowest high school graduation rate for Latinos in the country. So, you know, we start our pipeline projects very early, beginning with preschool. We mentor through middle school, high school, undergraduate, and law school. Because so few of us have made it to the profession, we understand the necessity for that reach back to help these young Latinos succeed in the profession. And I hope that those young Latinos are tuned in and learning and being inspired um, by someone like you. I'm very curious, Suri, how did a young Latina from El Barrio in Spanish Harlem wind up in law? And how did this shape you on your path and lead you to Minnesota? You know, I didn't want to go into medicine and I had two <laughs> options. <laughs> but, you know, I, I actually chose from a very early age to follow the legal profession. And really, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't have any lawyers in my family. I didn't have anybody I could talk to, but I understood even at a young age that lawyers were able to influence lives in a way that everyday people may not be able to. And I wanted to be at the table to be able to influence lives in a positive way and give back to my community in the areas that I know are needed. And that's why I became a prosecutor. I went back and forth on whether I should become a public defender or a prosecutor. And for the reasons I stated, I decided to go into prosecution. You know, growing up in Spanish Harlem, and, and I should clarify, I moved when I was quite young, but our family is still there. That is a part of my background. I'm highly loyal to New York and it's, I consider it my home. And so growing up with that background really influenced why I decided to go into law and why I decided to serve my community. I wanna be a government lawyer and I'm practicing as a government lawyer because I think it's the right thing to do. And that's why I've committed my profession to doing it. Wow, what a success story if we know one, right? <laughs> so Suri, what do you hope that our Latino community learns from serving justice against injustices like what happened to George Floyd? I hope that the Latino community sees this as a point of accountability and working in the right direction. The verdict in this case was not the answer. The verdict in this case is not the end of the story. It's the first step. And there's so much work to be done, which is why I went back earlier to talking about the grassroots efforts that really make a difference within our communities. And we have so many influential pillars in our community, such as Dolores Huerta, for example that are prime examples of how powerful grassroots efforts can really be to influence change. So again, this is just the beginning. Whatever we envision, can we can make that happen as long as we exercise our voices to do that. Eh, sorry, I don't want to ignore, no quiero ignorar your other last name, name Balmacun. You're mixed. Um, where, are you, where else are you from? Where's your family from? Okay, so, mi mamá es puertorriqueña, and then my dad is from, sorry, I, I went in back into my Spanglish. The so mom is from Puerto Rico, and my dad is from South America in Guyana. So, he's Caribbean Indian. So, I'm a Caribbean baby through and through. <laughs> Representando for the community. And you know, we have a large Guyanese population, large Puerto Rican population here in the Bronx. So they're like tuning in, like, where by? Is that another de nosotros? <laughs> Absolutely. And both sides of my family are in New York. And, you know, again, it's home. It's where we are. We miss you out here. <laughs> oh, man. I want to go back so fast, so soon. <laughs> You're always welcome back and always welcome back here at Bronx then as well, Suri. Before we go, uh, what message would you give a young person who aspires to have a career in law like yourself? This is not going to be an easy path. I want to tell you that from the beginning, but it is worth it. I mean, you really have to commit yourself and tell yourself, this is what I want to do. 
and I'm going to make it happen no matter what. And there are people in our community that want to see you succeed and want to support you. And even if you don't live in Minnesota, my contact information will be shared with you. And the contact information of the Minnesota Hispanic Bar Association will be shared with you. Please contact us. I'm happy to speak to any Latinx law student that is considering going to law school because you need a support network and you need your community. And we are more than happy to be there for you. Suri, it's been such a, a great pleasure catching up with you. Thank you so much for making the time to join us on our show. This is the silver lining, you know, from learning this, this pandemic tech, you know, thing. We can connect all the way from Minnesota to the Bronx to Harlem and, and it's incredible. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. It was great to be with you. I'm wishing you all of the best. Likewise. Thank you so much Take for in our community. Again, Suri Balmacun Santiago is the Assistant Attorney General at Minnesota Attorney General's Office, and she was one of two Latinas in the prosecution team in Chauvin's trial. We are very proud of her. Uh, we'll be right back here on Open BXRX Tuesday. <laughs>